Hi, welcome to the Black Spruce Knitting Podcast. My name is Allie and I live in the Green Mountains of Vermont in the United States on Abenaki land. Um, I live here with my partner Chris and our dog Darwin. Um, and I'm so happy to be here with you all. I know that it has been a while since my last podcast. I had intended to record sooner, but life got really busy. Um, but that means I have a lot to show you today. Um, I have two finished objects, some new works in progress. I have a few acquisitions and I finally have um, the yarn trade that I did with Liza from the Volbloom podcast. I had waited to share just until she received my package, which she has. Um, and at, then at the very end, I will talk about my life a little bit if you're interested in that. And um, there's some exciting things that are happening in my life um, and some of which are knitting related um, and may actually um, sort of impact this podcast. So if you want to, <laughs> you're welcome to stay um, and at the end hear a little bit more about what's sort of been going on in my world. All of that said, I will jump into my first finished object since I have a lot to talk about, which is what I'm wearing today. This is the sweater number nine by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And this sweater I knit in Barocco Mochi, which is a blown chainette yarn. It has like a nylon tube and then it has fibers blown through that tube. Um, like alpaca and I think wool and I got the black colorway but it has flecks of color in it and um, yeah I got the yarn from yarn.coms which is the um, website for webs which is a yarn store based out of Western Massachusetts which is close to where I live and they do a lot of discounts on yarn so each ball of this was 10 us dollars after a discount and i used about four and a half balls so i think it's a moderately affordable yarn which is cool um, it's very very soft and this pattern is pretty much just a basic raglan there are no short rows there's this nice turtleneck and some nice kind of like um detail on the raglan and then ribbed and it's a two by two rib i believe yes Two by two rib so i just did a regular cast on and a regular cast off um, i pretty much followed the pattern i knit the size large but i went down a needle size i actually did not gauge swatch for this pattern i usually do gauge swatch but for this one i felt like since it's a raglan i could kind of um you know figure figure it out as i went along and i didn't quite use all of the instructions like i just stopped i, I split for sleeves when i felt like i was ready i you know, I switched to um, the ribbing for the bottom when I felt like I was ready. Um, I kind of did the arm decreases sort of just the way that I wanted it to look. Um, but I mostly followed the pattern and it's a really, really well written clear pattern. I think this would be a great first sweater. And, you know, um, it was fun to do. It was pretty quick. Um, I will say it started to drag for me on the sleeves. I was doing the sleeves two at a time on Magic Loop and eventually I switched to nine inch circular and that actually helped me go a little faster. So I really like this finished object. Yeah, so this is, I think my first piece of black knitwear and I own a lot of black clothing, but it's really nice to finally have something hand knit in black. And it's really cozy. I think it will be nice when it gets cold again. It is starting to finally get warm here, although we are still getting some snow. Um, and it's like, it's a nicely proportioned finished piece. That said, I didn't love knitting this. Um, I think for me, I am a process knitter and I like to have one element of my knitting that is keeping me really engaged, whether that be the texture of the yarn or the texture of the stitches or cables or color work, or just even like an interesting color. And even with these flex, I think for me, this just sort of was like nice soft yarn, nice basic pattern. Um, I didn't feel like super excited while knitting it. It's more of a product knit um, and that's okay. I think that there is a lot of room for things like this in my wardrobe and it's cool to have um, a handmade version, um, but I don't know, maybe next time I would knit this pattern. 
I would use a different yarn, like uh, maybe a more rustic yarn with a cool texture. And maybe next time I use this yarn, because I do like this yarn, I would maybe do um, a different pattern with like more elements to it. So just a thing to consider. But I really do like this finished project. Um, yeah, and I'm happy to have it. And I'm looking forward to wearing it lots more. Um, yeah. So that is finished object number one. Um, finished object number two, I have talked about before, but it is done. And this is my Fumber sweater by Marie Wallen. I knit this, I had to buy a copy of Rowan Magazine to find the pattern, and it was a little hard to track down, which is unfortunate. It's also not super size inclusive. I think I originally knit the 46 inch, um, and I think it only has one size above that. Although I do know that in Marie Wallen's new book, there's gonna be a wider side size range, which is really cool. But um, I started by knitting the 46 inch, I'm about a 41 inch bust, and then I realized it was too big for me. So I sized down to the 42 inch and it's perfect. I think it's the third out of five sizes. So I had knit pretty much the entire body and I ripped it out um, and knit the body again. The way that this is knit is that you knit the body and the sleeves and then you connect them and then knit the yoke. But I felt okay about knitting the body again because I loved this yarn so much. So if knitting with the mochi felt like, okay, this is soft, knitting with this yarn, which is Nash Island Tide, felt really exciting because it's just a really cool texture. I have a lot of this yarn left over. Um, I have like one and a half balls of this and then, you know, almost at least like half a ball of these other two. And I've spoken about this yarn, but I'll share again. This yarn is made in Maine and I bought it when I was in Maine last summer um, on a trip with my family. And it is made from the fleece of wild sheep who live on an island and then there's a woman who goes and takes care of them and shears them <laughs> and makes different yarns. So this one is the sport weight tied and I think it's specifically for um, color work. I know that she, um, she like separates the fleece based on like, you know, like this is a very sticky rough yarn. Um, and the colors I used are seal, driftwood and barnacle. They all have very oceany names. Um, and it's so sticky. It's a really cool, lovely yarn. I don't find it itchy, but just rough. Um, the shop where I bought it, Clementine, I think the owner is the daughter of the woman who makes the yarn. And she was really excited when I was like, oh, I'm so excited. I did an episode. It was like my second episode. If you want to see some of the yarn. Um, and I finally used it to make this sweater and I love it. When I was knitting it, this gray, I wasn't 100% sure about it. Um, I thought it was gonna be more of a true gray and it turned out to kind of almost be like an icy blue gray. But now that I see the whole thing, I think it looks really neat. Um, and I still feel like overall, it's a pretty neutral color work yoke sweater. Um, and it just, it fits so nicely and the yarn bloomed and softened and I'm just really excited about it. Um, so a couple notes. One is that because it's one by one rib, I chose to do a tubular cast on and a tubular, a sewn tubular cast off. Um, I will say that because the yarn is so sticky, I was using metal chow glue needles and I still kind of had a problem. I did magic loop for the sleeves and I got some laddering until I really started pulling the yarn. But I switched to nine inch circulars for this too. And you can actually really see where I switched to nine inch circulars for the sleeves because my stitches got way neater, <laughs> um, which is interesting. I might be on the nine inch circular train now. So, you know, I think my stitches are a little less even um, for the other parts. I used size, oops. I did sew in all the ends, but I haven't cut this one yet but I used size US1 needles for the ribbing, US2 for all of the stockinette, and then US3 for the color work. So it was definitely a lot of knitting. Um, I didn't really modify anything. At one point I tried leaving out some decreases um, from the yoke and it was like, 
the shape changed too much so I ended up ripping back. Um, this is the easiest yarn to rip back with because the stitches just don't go anywhere because it's so sticky. My one thing about this pattern that I don't understand is so when you connect the sleeves to the body, you graft the armpit and then you do these decreases and it makes kind of like, I couldn't tell when I saw pictures of the pattern, but it makes like this interesting sort of like line. And I don't, I don't actually know why that's there, like what it does for shaping. Um, I mean, maybe it's just to make all of the stitches work right. Um, and when you're wearing it, it almost sort of gets hidden in your armpit. It, I wonder if it's like kind of a gusset. Um, but I don't understand it, but I trust the pattern and I think it looks nice when I wear it. Um, I will put a photo of me wearing this sweater right here. It's actually still a little bit damp from blocking, but um, I did just take it off the blocking mat to take some photos. Um, and I'm so happy with how it fits and how the color work looks. Um, I will go lay it flat to finish drying, but you know, I think it's, it almost feels sort of beachy to me. It definitely also feels like a winter sweater. I probably won't wear it too much um, until it gets cold again in the fall and the winter, um, but I'm so excited to wear it next year. I will store it very carefully to avoid moths, and I just really love this color work. Um, I will also put this into the knit along, the A Year of Marie Wallen knit along that a couple podcasts, including Knitting With um, Cat Hair are doing. I'm really excited because I always say I'm going to do knit alongs and I've never actually finished one. Um, and I want to knit, this is my second Marie Wallen pattern. I definitely want to knit more. Um, I have seen some beautiful yells recently. I just, I really like that Shetland color work. <laughs> um, this was also a great first Marie Wallen like garment pattern just because it's not all over color work. I just wish that they would put the patterns online so that they were more accessible to people. I would definitely knit this again um, and I would like to maybe knit more patterns from the magazine that it came from. Um, but yeah, I wish that, um, I wish it were easier to get to. Maybe someday Rowan will put all of their patterns online. That would be excellent because there's a lot of good patterns that are harder to knit when you can't really find them. So that's my fumber. I'm trying to think if I have anything else to say about it. Yeah, I love it. Yay. So those are my finished objects. I will jump into works in progress and I have three to show you. I have one that I'm like about, I'm like in the process of casting it on. Um, and I will mention that one, but I think that I won't talk too much about that. The first one, which I actually have shown you before, is in this Knitting Nelly bag. And this is my Lear baby blanket. And I just wanted to show you, ooh, I wanted to show you that I've made some progress on it. Um, this is by Nat Redwolf, and I am knitting it in Knit Picks Comfy, which is 75% cotton and 25% acrylic. Um, this is for my friend who's having a baby, um, who is due in a few weeks. <laughs> so this might not be 100% on time, but hopefully I will get it to her, um, shortly postpartum. Oops, and a bunch of stitches just fell off, but that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, I need to put this on a longer circular needle. So yes, it's by Nat Redwolf. Oh, I cannot remember. Actually, you know what? I have the knit picks right here. The color is called Copper. Um, my friend had asked for warm earth tones, so I picked this. And my friend has seen this and likes it. Um, and I will talk more about this when I'm done and also once it's been used. Um, I've got a lot left to knit, but I will say that I'm really enjoying this yarn. Um, I don't often knit with acrylic. I definitely have um, knit with a lot of acrylic and um, I just like the feeling of natural fibers more in my hands. Um, but I really like how like soft this is. It's kind of slippery. Um, it's a very simple 
stitch repeat, but it's pretty fun. Um, I brought this with me. We went to Philadelphia last week to see friends and I brought this with me and just sort of knitted while I was hanging out with people. And that was pretty fun. And I feel like it's going to be a really good baby yarn since hopefully it will be super, super washable. So I am hoping that once I finish this, I can recommend it and say, if you're looking for, if you're in the US or North America um, and you are looking for an inexpensive yarn for a baby knit, that Comfy is a good choice. Uh, I would love to try out different yarns for baby knits um, because I do think it can be, wow, these keeps, <laughs> it is very slippery. It probably would be good on wood needles, but I'm knitting on, on metal needles. But I would love to be able to recommend some baby yarns just because I think that we look for such different qualities in a yarn um, when we knit for babies rather than when we knit for ourselves um, with washability kind of being a key factor because I think that new parents oftentimes can't <laughs> hand wash things. Um, but I haven't knit for that many babies. Um, I'm excited, more people in my life are getting pregnant, um, so maybe there will be more baby knits ahead. So yeah, yay, very cute. Now on to some new works in progress, and I had mentioned this one in my vlog, but I hadn't cast it on yet. And I have one almost done. This, I haven't woven in any of the ends. This is the Rad Radish Mitt by Stone Knits. I've actually cast on the second one. I knit this in like a day and then I kind of lost steam. <laughs> I think that I knit this when I was like knitting this garment and I was knitting the body um, of the Fumber sweater and I was like, I just want to knit color work. And then I got to the color work in the Fumber sweater and I was like, okay, I have something else. Um, but I definitely will finish these because I think they are so cute. And I am knitting these in Knit Picks palette. This is actually a lot of the leftovers from my Wise Weed sweater. But then this light color is hand spun and it's sort of hand spun scraps. Like I only have this much left. And these are the two extra, oops, this is something different. This is like the two extra singles from the two skeins that I sent Liza. So I think half of it is Emily Jilly's and it has um, a little bit of silk content. And then half of it is Kingdom Fleece and Fiber Works, which is like a local crafter. And I just plied them together for the sky and the radish. And I think it's really cute. <laughs> I don't know if I wish I had used a different green for a little bit more contrast for the stalks, but I also really like that it almost has kind of a parchment feel. This is sort of, um, I haven't done the thumb yet also. I'm gonna knit the other one and then I'll do both the thumbs. I think I did most of this on size US1 and then US2 for the color work. I've been doing a lot of small tight gauge projects, um, but, uh, I think it's so cute. <laughs> I like that these are almost a little bit costumey. Like, I feel like it's something that like, I don't know, it looks like a little like fantasy or like storybook to me. And I think that's really fun. And I kind of want more garments that look a little bit storybook. Kate's Tangled Thread, I think is the username of someone on Instagram who knits and does other things. I'll definitely link them below. Um, they knit and do other things, but the, like all of their clothing feels very like storybook and not like costumey because it's wearable, but it's also like very character inspired. And I love that. Um, and I think it's really inspiring. So it's definitely a little big up here, probably because the hand spun is not really a true fingering. It's sort of thick and thin, um, but very cute would be lovely for like when I'm out gardening. Yay, I definitely wanna finish these. Maybe I'll take a day in the next few weeks and I'll just sit and do the color work for the other one. That's one new work in progress. So my next work in progress is with this hand spun. It's from Frabjus 
Fibers, which is a Vermont dyer. I believe the colorway is um, Redwood Forest. Um, it's Blue Face Luster. And I spun this when I fixed my wheel, so I hadn't spun for a while. It's like kind of fingering. Um, I need to get one of those things where you can check wraps per inch. Um, but it's like maybe fingering sport. Um, and I didn't know what to make with it. <laughs> um, this was another case where I purchased some spinning fiber, not really thinking about knitting with it. Um, I've kind of, I feel like in the future, I'm really going to be thoughtful about knitting, about spinning things to knit with, but I didn't know what to make with this. So I had considered doing the twigs by Junko Okamoto um, and using this as a contrast color and then doing just black because I thought this would be really cool. Actually, it is sort of cool. <laughs> I thought this would be cool as color work with black, but I just wasn't sure about it. Um, I did kind of a fractal spin, so the color would be like a little all over the place. And I was like, if I do a project as big as the twigs, I want to make sure that I'm really going to love it. And so oh, I was like, I really wanted to use this hand spun though. Um, and I was like, what should I do with it? I thought about doing a sweater for Chris, but I'm doing a different sweater for Chris right now. And I've got different sweaters for Chris on tap. So I was like, I just, I just want to use it. And then I thought maybe with two skeins of it, it would be enough to make a shirt. And I was thinking about maybe doing the Rift Tee by Jacqueline Seaslack, and I wasn't sure. And then I was watching Heather and Hops, and she talks a lot about the My Little Secret Crop by Jessie May. Um, which I have not knit before. I've knit the Summer Secret Crop, which is free, and I don't love that pattern. I actually haven't shown that one just because I don't, I don't wear it ever. Um, there's some like things about it that I just don't love. And um, Kat from Heather and Hops also said that she does not love the Summer Secret Crop, but she does love the My Little Secret Crop. And so I was like, maybe it would be fun to try that pattern with this yarn. That said, that pattern is really knit, um, written for a DK, and I think that this is too light. So I went down in um, needle size to a US2, and I sized up to a 2XL, whereas I probably normally would have knit a medium or a large. This is what I have so far, and I actually really like it. <laughs> I think it looks really cool. So this is gonna be like a little wool tank top for myself. Um, it's definitely pretty colorful and I wasn't sure at first. And then I was looking at some photos of garments from this brand Paloma Wool. I will put a couple photos of some of their garments right here so you can get a sense of what they sort of make. Um, and they're like a nice brand. I think their stuff is a little more expensive. I don't own anything from them, but I really like their style. And to me, this almost sort of reads as like a Paloma wool type kind of like pattern. So I'm really excited. <laughs> um, it's really fun. This is, you know, this is really fun to see what colors kind of come up. Um, and I've just been knitting on this all the time. This is um, a green bean, Katie Green stitch marker that Chris got me for my birthday. Um, and yeah, um, I tried it on and I think it's gonna fit okay. It might be a little bit big actually, but that's okay since it's so stretchy. Um, I actually think I did US1 for the bottom ribbing, but I did a regular cast on. I didn't bother doing a tubular cast on for this. Um, it's just kind of a quick project. So one thing I will say is that I didn't do a, a good job spinning this yarn. I didn't do a bad job. <laughs> I could feel as I knit with it that it is very overspun and overplied. And it's not terrible, like it's not like um, super rough, but I can feel it in my hands. And that's actually part of why I think it's so important to knit with your hand spun, is that you get a sense of like what you are spinning to knit with. Um, my friend Hannah, whose Instagram I will also link, um, I think Muddle Through is Hannah's knitting Instagram. Hannah's the first person who um, let me use her wheel, which is really cool. Um, but Hannah sort of talked about like spinning the yarn that you want to knit with. And I haven't taken any spinning classes. I think at some point I should. I'm very like, I just watched some YouTube channels and sort of figured it out. 
and I don't feel like I'm spinning the exact yarn that I want to knit with right now. And I'm in the middle of a sweater spin. I haven't been spinning recently. Um, I took a break because I hurt my back. Um, my back is better, but I just haven't been spinning. Um, but I think after that sweater spin, I'm gonna really do some research on like how to spin the yarn that I like to knit with. And this is a two ply, and I did purposefully over ply it because I like, here. I like the look of an over plied two ply yarn but I think I maybe don't love knitting with it. But also I do kind of, li I like how the fabric feels. So maybe it's okay. <laughs> I don't know. It's a little inconsistent. I think my spinning can definitely be improved. This, knitting this, knitting a whole garment out of hand spun instead of just like using it for color work, um, which is what I've done with hand spun before. Um, is really helping me to understand some things about my spinning. So if like me, you are new to spinning, um, I would recommend trying to knit with your hand spun because you'll learn a lot about what you like and what you don't like. Yeah, so, but I do really like how this is turning out. <laughs> it's a great learning experience. There are some areas where I'm like, this feels perfect, it feels squishy, it feels bouncy, but it's not too thick. Then there are other areas where I'm like, mm, too much twist, doesn't feel good in my hands. <laughs> so yes, very fun new project, very excited about it. Um, and I will show you hopefully, next time I film a podcast, I'll have this finished and I can talk some more about the pattern. So far it's a great pattern. Actually, I should say a couple things about Jessie Mae patterns since I've knit a couple of them. Um, she writes a lot in her patterns. If you haven't knit one of her patterns before, just be aware that she writes everything out, um, which is great for some people and not great for others. I don't mind it. I also don't mind reading like knitting abbreviations. Um, but you know, you can, you can pick and choose if it's right for you. Um, I know some people have great luck with her patterns and some people have less luck. Um, I have an almost finished cozy classic light sweater that I need to finish. I just need to do the sleeves. Um, and, but I do really like how it fits, but then the summer seeker crop, I don't love. So, you know, you can try it and see what's right for you. And I will report back on how I find this one once I have finished knitting it. So that is almost all my works in progress. I will briefly tell you that I am casting on right now for the cotton grass sweater. I have a little swatch right here and I have Blue Sky Fibers wool stock in I think charcoal of Junction Fiber Mill in making tracks in, in the deep end. And I knit a swatch and I did not get gauge for the swatch and I was sort of poking through projects and some, people's, some people had reported similar gauge issues. Um, my gauge is way too small, like too many stitches per inch. Um, and someone was sort of mentioning that um, this pattern by the Petite Knitter, she's really using like a very thick yarn, but calling it a DK, but it's maybe more like a worsted. So I'm going up two sizes. This is for Chris and I'm gonna see how it turns out. Um, it is a top-down raglan, so it'll be easy for Chris to try on. And if it doesn't seem like it's gonna fit, I might switch what I'm doing. I did realize that I have these two different skeins and that this one is going to be a much more of a contrast with the charcoal than this one. So I think I'm gonna wind up this one to cast on for the sweater. Um, and I am excited. It's definitely getting a little warm, but like I said, we're still getting snow here as well. And I want to knit this this year. <laughs> like I wanna knit it this, now so I'm not gonna wait till the fall um you know and we might have some cold nights in the winter um hopefully it'll be a sweater for Chris to wear all the time yeah so that is all of the like knitting content I have a couple acquisitions but I think I'm actually gonna start with the stuff that Liza sent me um, since I have been waiting to share this for quite some time. So I did a um, yarn trade with Liza from the Bulbulm podcast. 
Um, and Liza's podcast is amazing. I really, really recommend checking it out. She lives in South Africa and she talks a lot about South African yarns and she's a beautiful knitter. She has like a very feminine, lovely style. Um, and also it was so cool to talk to Liza and think about what's really different about what's available in the places that we live. Um, and Liza sent me a couple things that I'm so excited to show you. The first thing that she sent me, everything else is in here, is this gorgeous bag that she made. Isn't this incredible? It has this beautiful strap. Um, she has these little tags that say made by Liza. I know it's probably reversed, um, but it's this beautiful, it's got this, um, it's got, <laughs> what do you call it? It's beautiful, it closes, it's incredibly well made, and I just was so excited to get it. Um, I love this fabric with all of the flowers. I think Liza knows that I love nature, and I mean, it's just so cool. So I just, this project bag is very special to me. I probably... <laughs> going to be very careful with it because I want it to last forever. Um, I also had commented on one of Liza's videos just being like, oh, I love that needle case. And so she also sent me a handmade needle case. And there's actually some stuff already in here. I have some needles. But I started putting them in and then I was like, oop, I was like, I'm going to wait until I film the podcast um, and reorganize my needles, which are a mess right now. But she made this beautiful needle case and notions holder and a lot of my needles actually I inherited um, from another knitter and they are really everywhere and so I'm just so excited it has this sweet tie and this beautiful botanical print and again it's just so well made so thank you Liza for these lovely lovely things but also the yarn Liza basically sent me two different types. One type of yarn is this Eco Lush, um, and it's bamboo and cotton. I've never knit with bamboo before. And Liza sent me a bunch of this multicolored, which is called Savannah, and then also one of each of the colors in the Savannah. So these colorways are Cobblestone, Willow, and Old Gold. And Liza wrote to me about how um, the landscape of the savanna um, in South Africa, it's the northern part, inspired her, um, I think, when picking these colors. And she wrote about how there's like golden grass in the winter and then green grass. And there's all of these different animals like antelope and um, baobab. I think that's how you say it, baobab trees. Um, and this is a really cool yarn. It's just like... It feels really light. Um, now that I'm looking at it, I'm really noticing that one ply specifically is very shiny. I wonder if that's um, the bamboo viscose. Um, and Liza had said that this might be nice for a color work um, summer top, which is definitely my plan. Um, I think I've mentioned in past podcasts that I am thinking a lot about what knitting might look like in the summer. And I definitely want to make like a really, I have to think, I almost want to design something with this yarn. Um, do you see how in the white one, it's got all of the different colors? So it's like, I don't know. <laughs> it's very cool. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'm going to try to design a color work top, maybe like use a different top as a base, not to publish a design, but just for myself. Like, um, I like the idea of doing like color work on the bottom and then maybe like white on the top. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's what it's going to be. So this is very cool. I'm just looking at my notes. I think you'd probably say Echo Lush, not Eco Lush, right? I'm so sorry. <laughs> um... I love this. So this was the first yarn that Liza sent me. And Liza sent me five of this color, so this will definitely be the base. 
for, oh my gosh, I almost, yeah, I, I love this. I feel like it's gonna feel like painting with yarn and it's really soft, but definitely feels like it will be so cool for the summer. Um, yes, cotton and bamboo viscose. And then Liza also sent me, oh my gosh, so generous. <laughs> Liza sent me five skeins of Naughty Habit, which is what she said is her favorite yarn and it's hand dyed in South Africa. And this colorway is called Olives. And Liza wrote to me um, about how there is an area in South Africa um, I think, let me make sure I'm getting it right. The Western Cape, I wrote down what some of what it, what she had written to me. So in the Western Cape, there's a Mediterranean climate and it's perfect for growing olives. And she wrote a little bit more, um, about sort of like the significance of that area. And this yarn is 90% superwash merino and 10% linen. It's single ply and just look at this colorway it's so beautiful it's got these just these like beautiful speckles but it's this like really lovely gray and it's so it's like it's neutral but exciting and Liza told me that oh my gosh Liza told me that this makes like a really beautiful fabric and so I have a couple patterns in mind for this but I'm definitely going to sit with it I'm gonna swatch and be like really thoughtful and intentional because this feels like very special yarn and I'm just really grateful to have received this package. Um, yay. So if you want to see what I sent to Liza, um, definitely check out her video. I will totally link it um, when this goes live. I know that she'll publish her video as well. Um, and you can see what I sort of sent as a representative of where I live here in Vermont. Um, and in North America and what we kind of have available, which is like really different than what is available in South Africa. So, oh, I'm just sitting here feeling really lucky <laughs> and grateful to have received such a lovely package. So thank you so much, Liza, so sincerely. So I have purchased a few things, not very many. I have gone to many yarn stores and walked in and then walked out without buying yarn because I'm just not trying, I'm trying not to buy too much right now in this moment. Um, but I have a few things that I have purchased. I also have ordered some um, Jameson and Smith cones from the Woolly Thistle. Um, I had a gift certificate there for my birthday and I used some of my own money as well, um, but those haven't come in yet. So I will show those to you next time. But I did also order from the Woolly Thistle a skein of black frangipani yarn. This is British wool. So the Woolly Thistle is like online only, although they are located kind of close to where I live. And they were hiring. And I had a moment where I was like, I could quit my day job and go work for the Woolly Thistle. And I was like, don't do that. <laughs> but um, they're really close to where my parents live. Um, they're right over the border in New Hampshire, but they import a ton of British wool. And um, I wanted to get a ton of like a black sport weight to use with that hand spun for the twigs. But then when I got it and I was holding them together, I just wasn't sure. But this yarn seems really nice and so i feel like i'm definitely going to use it for something else it might still be the background color for the twigs it might be for a different color work sweater um it's so funny look how much of a darker black it is compared to mochi from barocco um i feel like i could do a lot with this so i'm still feeling pretty good um it's just like a non-superwash wool worsted spun and dyed in yorkshire um, I feel like I could still do something. I mean, I'm definitely going to do something with this. This is not my first cone ever, but it's my first cone since I was a teenager and I bought cones in Montreal when I was younger that have disappeared into time. So 
can't even remember how much this cost. I want to say like 60 US dollars and it is 500 grams, 1200 yards. So non superwash, a nice wool. I will use it for something. This is the first thing that I have purchased. The second thing is that I got a spring knitting box and it came recently. Um, it's from Shop Knitting Nelly. And I know that the maker of the bags, um, I have that other bag from her as well. I know that she had had some health problems, so it was a little bit delayed. I ordered this back in like January. And it came with this adorable handmade project bag. I just really like her bags. I think they're very, very sweet and quilted. Um, I have been learning to quilt. Maybe at some point in time I'll share my quilt. Maybe when it's done. And it came with a bunch of other things like a little dried bouquet that we have over there and a little a, like great little plate that I'm using for notions. But it also came with some stitch markers and some yarn. And this yarn is from Hello Stella Fibers and it is non-superwash sock yarn. So it's the Highland Wool Sock Set. The, type, the theme of the box was spring heirloom and so this was called the Spring Heirloom Bundle. And I think it's beautiful. It's very soft, squishy, 100% wool. I love this color and I love this purple color. This red is very, very bright for me. I imagine I might do a pair of socks without it, but I also, maybe it would be cool to try something a little bit new. So I'm not quite sure if I'll use the red, but I think a pair of socks like this would be lovely. That said, I think I am also facing the facts that I'm not really much of a sock knitter. Um, eventually, I could see myself knitting many more socks, <laughs> but um, I, don't, I don't love knitting socks. Um, I'd rather have sweaters to knit um, or shawls or gloves. It's just something about socks that is not my favorite. So maybe I won't use this for socks. Maybe it will go into something else at some point in time. I could definitely see using this for color work. I would really like to try knitting some very woolly socks, but I don't think that it will be soon. So I might, maybe I'll hold on to this for when the weather gets cold again. Um, I definitely have ambitions to be more of a sock knitter, but I have two pairs of socks that are unfinished right now that I really need to finish. Um, yeah. Also, the box came with these cute stitch markers and progress keeper from, I think this is, I want to say Dasana Knit, but I might be reading this incorrectly. Um, so I will put it below in case I got it wrong. It was just a really sweet box. I definitely purchased it as a treat to myself. You know, it was a surprise. I didn't know what the yarn would look like. And I just, I love this mustard color and I'm a big fan of the lavender as well. Um, and I think the bag is adorable. And wow, the yarn matches the bag so well. <laughs> so sweet. So I'm really glad that I purchased it. That's definitely one of my favorite shops to buy from. There's a lot of really great shops though. Um, and that's it for acquisitions. I can't believe I didn't buy anything else. Oh my gosh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> So yeah, that's all of the knitting content that I have for you. I feel like I raced through it a little bit, but that's okay. Um, hopefully you understand. Um, and let me think. Life stuff. So first I will put in a few updates. One, I gave my father the Gaston sweater and he loves it. It fits him really well. The sleeves are a little long, um, which is true of really all of his sweaters. So he does cuff them and next time I knit him a sweater, I will knit the sleeves a little shorter, but he loves it and I think it looks great on him and I'm so, so happy. So here is my father wearing that sweater. Um, the seeds that we planted are doing great. Um, we'll be able to put them in the ground in a couple weeks after last frost. We bought some fruit trees today. That footage at the beginning was of us planting um, a cherry tree. We have two apple trees, one which we put in and a peach tree. One of the apples and the peach will also wait until last frost. And then the bigger news that I have is that Chris and I are gonna get married <laughs> um, in the fall. It's gonna be really small. I'm not even really saying that we're engaged yet, but 
we're gonna have a really small wedding ceremony in the fall, um, which is pretty exciting. Um, we're gonna probably just have it here, like really immediate family and yeah. So the reason that this is particularly exciting for this podcast is that I think I'm gonna knit my wedding dress. And I had originally planned to knit a shawl, but then when I was looking at dresses, the type of dress I want doesn't go with a shawl. And then I was thinking about it and I was like, I think I want to attempt to just knit it. Um, and I have a pattern in mind and I have till October and I, if it doesn't work out, I will buy a wedding dress. Um, we already have plans to go up to Montreal um, to buy a dress. So I have till August to see if it's gonna work or not. Um, and I can see it in my mind and I think it's doable. Um, I just have to actually do it. So what does that mean for this channel? It means that I might be updating less often um, during the summer because the dress that I'm planning on knitting is lace. And I don't think that lace is interesting for podcasts. <laughs> um, it goes slow. It doesn't look very good until it's blocked. Um, I don't know how much I'm going to be filming. I'm going to finish the sweater for Chris and the tank top, and then I'm hoping to start this project. Um, so I don't know what that's going to look like right now. And I am not going to make videos. I've already decided I don't want to make videos about the construction until it's done because if it doesn't work out, I think I'll be kind of upset and I don't want a record <laughs> of how frustrated I am. Um, I think it could work out. I think it could work out really well, but I don't want that on record until I like know that it is a garment that I'm gonna wear. And I love the idea of knitting my own wedding dress because I think that I feel happiest and most confident in items of clothing that I've made. Um, and it feels like it would be really special, um, but um, it might not work. <laughs> it feels a little risky. So there's a backup. I can buy a dress and I can eat the cost of the yarn. I have a yarn picked out. Um, the yarn that I want is actually only sold in, sold in a store in Montreal. Montreal is the biggest, clo the closest big city to where I live. It's like about two hours away. It's closer than Boston. Um, and it's now much easier to get over the border. Um, I might order online. We'll see. Um, so just a heads up, I might be posting less often this summer. I imagine that um, I might not be posting as much until the fall. Um, there probably will be at least one more episode with some of the items that I showed you today finished. Um, there might be some more episodes about gardening and homesteading, but I don't know what it's going to look like. So I hope you can understand. I still have plans to do some bigger projects, um, filming local yarn and exciting things like that and local producers. Um, but in addition to working, um, cause I've been working a lot recently, um, this project of hopefully making a garment to get married to my favorite person in the world um, feels like a big project. So yeah, um, exciting things coming up. <laughs> so I hope that you're doing well. I hope that, you know, you are taking good care of yourself, um, giving yourself what you need and you know enjoying lots of wonderful projects and watching fun things and connecting with people and connecting with yourself and i'll see you maybe in a couple weeks for another podcast but until then take good care i'll see you soon <laughs>